CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. What have you got to work on? I mean, we've lost the test series, the one day series here, and also now the T20. Uh, well, we beat ourselves in these games. Simple as that. Uh, obviously, credit to West Indies and Pakistan, but we should have won both those games. So we've got a, uh, only ourselves to blame. I think uh, George summed it up pretty well. I think we underclub with the bat uh, in both games. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I think we needed 75 off 10 the last, the first game with eight wickets in hand, and we, our match awareness has got to improve in this format. Um, and then today, obviously, we got 178 and didn't bat very well. And our top six, we've got to take the shoulder of that, especially probably at the times they got out more so than anything else. You know, last couple of balls of Nareens over those sorts of things they've got to get better at, and that's about learning. But in this tournament, in this format, you can't afford to learn; you've got to win. There you go. Coach? Yeah. Yeah, here. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, what do you make of a, uh, off the field verbal encounters? Because sometimes do you think that you wake up a sleeping giant, which happened today? Uh, so, sorry, can you explain that question again? What was that? I was saying, what do you make of a verbal uh, encounters, which your player... Oh, uh, I play hard. Uh, so, what, so give me an example of today. Uh, no, no, I'm saying that uh, Faulkner was involved in a verbal encounter before the match. Before the that, match? Yeah, he doesn't like West Indian cricket team and that motivated West Indian cricket team. Do you think that these verbal uh, encounters sometimes wake up a sleeping giant? Well, they're, they're big players, so they are giants. Um, from my point of view, James is probably going to choose his words a little bit better, but that's just part and parcel of the banter of the game, isn't it? We're in the, the entertainment business, and if I could dance like Chris Gale, I'd be dancing every night of the week. So um, we, we play our cricket hard, and, and verbally that's what's going to happen, but we play it fair. So, you know, that, that's just part and parcel. You live and die by the sword, don't you? You, you win, you lose, you just got to cop it and move on. Uh, Darren, after such a you know, brilliant summer, winning, winning back the Ashes, uh, taking, you know, taking South Africa 2-1 series victory over there, uh, if this is to be, you know, the, the game which knocks Australia out to, uh, of the, the T20 World Cup, is it a disappointing end to, to what has been such a great summer? Uh, very much so, because we played really good 2020 cricket, obviously, at home and then in South Africa just before we came here. So and I think the skipper summed it up really well. We, we were probably at 70% uh, for the whole, in all three formats. And it's a good um, learning curve, but as I said, you've got to win those games. But... We've got to be on the mark each and every time, especially in this format, knockout format. And you find out about some players in pressure situations, which is good and bad for a, a coach uh, and a captain. So at least we learn. Brad Haddon took a fantastic catch, but overall, last two matches, his wicket keeping hasn't been probably up to his standards. It's been around for, I mean, six months. Do you think a little bit of mental fatigue? Yeah, his keeping's been poor. That's OK. You won't mind me saying that. He, he, he's honest enough for that. But... He's been fantastic for over a long period of time for us. Um, he took a great catch, um, obviously, uh, tonight. Uh, missed a couple of opportunities, but end of the day, he's been exceptional for us. And you know, he, he, he'd be disappointed in his own form in the, these two games. And you know, that, that's not hiding away from the truth. The, the simple fact of life is he's one of our better performers. And uh, you know, a couple of our experienced blokes, Shane Watson, for example, David Warner, they, they didn't make have the impact all those three that we would like. Oh, he's had a lot, a lot of cricket, um, but end of the day, we all have jobs and we all have a lot of cricket to play. Um, but he's been fantastic around our group, and we'll stick with him because he's he's a brilliant person, um, and he'll, he'll get a rest now and and obviously freshen up and come back a better player. Darren, you're just talking about finding out about players. I mean, obviously you know about the players that um, Dan Christian and uh, who else am I thinking of? Someone else, Cameron White, that hasn't mm -hmm. played. Um, but would you like maybe, if you, if you are going the tournament, to give them a hit at some point, even against India, for instance? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to speak to Rod, who's selected with me on duty. So, you know, we'd love to play our guys. End of the day, you're playing a game for your country, so you've still got to pick the best team to win the, win the game. And if those guys come in, they'll be in the best 11 and we'll play them. So we'll, we'll sort of sum that up next. We've only got 48 hours, so we'll have to work pretty quickly on that one. Coach, um, when George was asked about uh, the celebrations of the West Indies on the field after the match, a group match at that, uh, he talked about art of winning versus art of losing, and I saw you 
you know, make, give a nod as if you approve his thought on that. Could you expand further on that? Oh, no. I thought he summed it up pretty well. End of the day, you know, you're going to get emotional with, with winning, and we've certainly been through those stages. Um, but we're really respectful of that as well. Uh, when you win, you've got to win in the right way and, and act appropriately. And look, that's the way they do that. That's fine. That's not our choice. That's not certainly not what we do. But, you know, they certainly dance very well, though. I'll give them that. Darren, uh, you lost the first six wickets today to spin. Um, do you look at that now or at the end of this tournament as an area that you want to focus on? You know, you f do you think that's a weakness for the, the batsman? Not a weakness because certainly spinners didn't get us out. We got ourselves out today. So we've certainly got some work to do in that area. But, you know, that's like every area, fast bowling, um, playing short pitch bowling. It's no different. Um, the wickets certainly haven't spun as much as we thought. So that's certainly no excuse for our, our batters. Um, Coach, uh, following up on that question, up next you will be against India and the spinners are in great form. So is this a challenge considering that today out of the eight figures, the top six went over, uh, were uh, picked up by the spinners? Yeah, we're lucky enough that we've played some decent one-day cricket against India in India uh, not too long ago, October. So we know them very well. They know us very well. So it's going to be a great challenge for our batters and bowlers to, to put a complete performance together. If we do that, then you know, we can compete with anyone in the world. Then uh, my question is a bit different. Mm. Uh, my question is, what is the job of a coach of a cricket team in this level? Is it uh, uh, teaching the players or uh, just set the game plans? A uh, bit of both. Trying to teach them uh, and you need to win as a coach, don't you? Because if you don't win, what happens? You normally get booted, so you've got to try and win some games. So. You know, we're about the art of teaching the game of cricket and we certainly have it. We know what we need to do, but our match awareness has got to improve in the situations over the last two games where we've been very good for a long period of time or the last six months or so. Um, and as long as the players are learning, we're fine with that. Really honest group, really proud of them. George has led them really well in this tournament, so no dramas there. We'll keep learning and keep coming, so that's the way it is.